And if he throws his SP2 while he has Pure of Heart, I'm going to instantly take incinerate damage. Yo, oh, welcome to the show. Uh, super lame intro, but this is war number four of season 24. Ugh, God, I suck. All right, so I am taking path four in section one. Just got a void, and then I'm taking Mole Man on node 19. And then I've got Emma in Vision Arcus um, on path one in section two. I'm also taking Magneto, and I'm actually going to be bringing Thing for several fights this war. So this is my team, my newly ranked 2 Cable, my rank 3 Apocalypse, of course, and my rank 5 Thing. Uh, also, throughout this season, guys, I'm not going to actually speed up my boost. In the past, I've done that just to try to get to the fights and cut down on in-between fights uh, time and stuff like that, but... I do want to talk about my reasoning for the boost. I think that that's a huge part of war strategy. And, uh, you know, at this point, too, you guys have probably seen me talk about almost every matchup that you're going to see throughout this season. So I only threw on, I threw on a six hour boost, but I only threw on the 10%. It only costs 30 units, which is awesome. It's going to last me for six hours, and that's just the 10% attack boost. So I don't want to boost my. Uh, health at all or use a champ boost which boosts health because again I've, I've had some issues this season managing my items with apocalypse because his health pool is so large especially with greater vitality which I always run at nine out of nine which gives me about I think it's it's seven or eight percent extra health so I also threw out a combat regen boost here because I knew I was gonna get um, some weaknesses but I wasn't really sure how much damage that was going to do. Um, I think that this is a rank 2 void, and I presume that this is going to be a pretty low sig void. I should and could have checked before I entered this fight, and that would have let me know kind of how much damage I was going to be taking while I had a debuff on me, but I didn't do that. So, um, yeah, anyway, it's not really a big deal. This is going a lot better than I expected it to. Um, I'm also not running suicides for obvious reasons. I'm fighting void here. But I'm going to try to, I'm going to be tinkering with different mastery setups throughout this war, and I'll talk about uh, that throughout this throughout this war as I get through those fights and stuff. You guys will notice different masteries that I'm using. But uh, yeah, this fight is going pretty well. Honestly, just trying to keep a little bit of space, trying to build up as many debuffs as possible, and I'm doing four hit combos and then backing off just to try to minimize the amount of weakness uh, debuffs that build up on me and they accrue when you're near the defender so um, you know this isn't like an ideal matchup uh, or anything like that I mean Ghost I think would be the best matchup here even Archangel would, or you know Fury would just absolutely shred Void there but again it's, it's really kind of just finding a spot for me um, on paths through uh, four through six because I wanted to take that Mole Man um, I think Mole Man, the best matchup probably for this Mole Man would be an Omega Red, but generally speaking, we only run one Omega Red in my battle group each war, and that's Lizer. Uh, she's a phenomenal Omega Red player, and I needed her elsewhere for uh, harder fights than this one. So Apocalypse is going to take care of this fight really easily, and I didn't want to waste her Omega Red because we had another fight elsewhere that was, I think, more demanding. So... Uh, this node does have power alternator. You guys see there, I think three times I missed a parry uh, attempt. So I just kept backing off there. Not a big deal. I'm just trying to be patient here. Again, I'm not running suicides. I, I thought about throwing on bleed suicides just to gain bleed immunity, but then I realized, like, I, I don't need that for this war. I'm not using Apocalypse for any really difficult fights. I'm not taking any mini-bosses with him, so I don't need to have that bleed um, immunity. I suppose that if I were to screw up here and, and I got whacked by a combo, I could take a lot of bleed damage and maybe bleed immunity would, would help in that case, but you know, I'm just going to not mess up and then I don't have to worry about it. So um, this node does have power alternator. So basically you guys are going to see me kind of throwing my specials liberally just to make sure that I don't, whenever that gray timer underneath this health bar ends, 
I don't have more health than he does because if I do, he's going to steal that power. Um, and that's kind of the only danger in, in this fight. It does. This node also does have heavy hitter. Um, and I, I understand the placement of um, Mole Man here because he can turn or purify um, the stun debuffs from Parry um, and t turn them into Monster Mass. But um, with Apocalypse and his uh, purification ability, accuracy reduction, don't have to worry about that at all. So anyway, all right, two fights down, super easy fights. Um, now I'm going to be taking, I'm on the same set of boosts here. But what I cut out is I did change my masteries here. So I'm going to be using Thing for this long shot. Um, now, I won't be able to be nullified, which is great. I'm also shock immune, so I don't have to worry about EMP modification. However, I am not incinerate immune, so I do have to be careful of long shot throwing an SP2 if he has um, five uh, karma. Um, so if he has five good karma, then he gets... Uh, you know, he gets something called Pure of Heart, and if he throws his SP2 while he has Pure of Heart, I'm going to instantly take Incinerate Damage, whether I block the special attack or evade it or what. It doesn't matter. So, that's the only concern here. I just don't want him to get to an SP2, and if he does get to an SP2, I need to uh, make sure that he doesn't have uh, Pure of Heart. So anyway, you guys notice underneath my own health bar, I do have that Poison debuff from Suicides. I was like slightly worried about Thing's damage output, so I was like, you know what, I think for for Thing, I'm just going to go ahead and run full suicides here, and I'm not going to slow this fight, or I'm not going to speed this fight up, um, and it, it, it is going to be a little bit longer fight, but you guys are going to kind of see all the damage that I end up taking just from this, um, you know, just from having Liquid Courage on. And I'm going to be using Thing for two more fights. So I, you know, I, I'm kind of new to playing Thing in War. Um, and I, I just think that that was not the right decision. I think that uh, the Bleed Suicide is probably fine. Obviously, I'm Bleed Immune. Um, but still, with like the recoil damage and stuff that I would take if I were to throw specials. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. Um, of course, I'm not going to be throwing specials on this node. Um, after he throws a special, every time I hit into him, I'm losing uh, power, it's that power drain, which is fine. I'm not worried about it. <clears throat> but I've lost, you know, I don't know, I don't know how much of uh, my health I've lost to block damage. But I'm guessing that, you know, probably 80% of the health that I've lost is because of that uh, poison debuff from suicide. So I just, yeah, I think that it's not not a good decision, or it wasn't a good decision to do that. But anyway, live and learn, that's okay. Again, it's not going to cost me anything, it's just going to, um, you know, cost me, it's going to cost me potions, it's not going to cost me anything that really matters, uh, like an attack bonus or anything like that. But uh, there you go, live and learn, if you guys don't run Thing often, and you have that fight. Um, I do really, really like Thing in that matchup. I think he's easily the best matchup for Longshot. On that note, Quake can be dangerous, and, um, you know, uh, Doom, if he if he were to trigger Dexterity or anything like that, uh, Longshot can auto-nullify uh, buffs from his signature ability. And uh, again, if he gets to an SP2 um, and he has Pure of Heart, you're probably going to die unless you are Incinerate Immune. Anyway, alright. Using Apocalypse here for this Emma Frost. Again, this isn't like a quote-unquote ideal matchup, but this isn't really a fight that, I mean... I don't know, I think, you know, almost any fight in the game, prop, or almost any champ in the game probably could take this fight. You just gotta play it smart, and as long as you're able to do enough damage. Um, now this Emma Frost, as you guys have probably noticed, is not awakened. Um, I have been caught so many times in the past going into an Emma fight, and for whatever reason, I don't, it doesn't, uh, I don't really think about whether she's awakened or not, and if she's unawakened, then her specials are not inverted, and then you end up uh, dashing the, in the wrong direction and getting caught. So, all right, here I'm using Thing for Vision Arcus. I do really like this placement. Um, in the past, we've we've had, I think, Doctor Doom take this fight and just kind of overpower Vision Arcus um, with the Doom Cycle. You don't really have to worry about Buffet because you're going to kill him so fast. Um, you know, Archangel is also a pretty good option on this fight. Um, 
But, but yeah, I, you know, I, I'm using Thing here, and I'm going to be using Thing for that Magneto also. And Magneto, again, is going to be a fight that usually we would have a Quake take, but because of that long shot, we definitely wanted to have a Thing heading over in this direction, and it was easiest to fit a Thing on my team. So uh, that's kind of why we did that. Now, this Vision Arcus is unawakened also, which means he won't have that tenacity, so I don't ever have to worry about him shrugging off my parries. Um, the cool thing, if you guys look underneath my health bar, um, I have that little armor break dormant uh, debuff. It's not technically a debuff yet, so it's just kind of on a timer. And anytime you're near Vision Arcus, um, if you're near him for, I believe it's two seconds or maybe three seconds, um, the cold air, the frozen air uh, from, from him will armor break you. And if it armor breaks you, once you're armor broken, it will start to stack up uh, cold snaps. And uh, that's why Quake can't take Vision Arcus. Um, but, you know, Dr. Doom and Thing are both immune to armor break, so you don't have to worry about that at all. And um, Thing, again, he can't be nullified, so don't have to worry about Buffet or anything like that. Uh, there I was a little bit late to punish. Um, I should have dexed out of the last little bit of his SP2. Uh, that was pretty risky of me to head, head on in right after that. I could have gotten parried and then I would have just lost some health. So um, the only thing to worry about here is his power. And basically I'm not going to be throwing any specials because I want to keep as many rock stacks as possible. Now, if I get to a point where he's going to throw his SP3, then I'm going to throw my heavy, which is going to automatically trigger protection. So, um, you know, I'm just kind of keeping an eye on that. I do want to try to bait his uh, specials out still because I don't want to be in a position where I have to trigger protection manually. Uh, but that's my plan. If, if he were to get to an SP3, um, then, you know, I'm just going to throw my heavy. That'll trigger protection. And then I'll take 95% uh, reduced damage with 15 rock stacks. So it's going pretty well. There I got hit. Um, I, I don't know, man. I think I must. I just must have missed the button. But obviously, um, it it triggered unstoppable because I had 15 rock stacks, um, which is pretty cool. And then I'm gonna throw the SP3 just in in the fight. So overall, pretty easy and safe fight here. Again, I wouldn't say Thing is like the best matchup here, but um, he's doable and and based on. Uh, just the defensive war map, their placements and stuff like that. This is kind of what worked out for us. All right, um, using a couple more items. So I've used four items this war. In the previous video, I used 12 items, and I haven't died this season yet. So it's been an expensive season, but I am learning some tricks. Um, in the next war, I'm going to be using Apocalypse. In war number five, I'm, I'm using Apocalypse pretty heavily, and I made some adjustments to try to minimize the cost of using him in war, and I'll talk about that in that video. So I think I'm, I'm still I'm learning kind of what, what the best uses of uh, my items are for, for these champs that I'm not really used to playing in war. Um, all right, so here, you know, I threw the, I don't have to worry about Buffet, um, but I threw the Heavy because I'm, I'm you know, at, in the first part of this fight, I'm trying to uh, actually play with um, strike counter. Uh, it's technically strike counter power uh, power drain on this node. So um, you know, and then as I build up furies, uh, every time I throw a special, I'm converting all of my rock stacks into furies. As I build those furies up, I realize you know I'm doing plenty of damage. I, I can just hold my specials. I don't even care about the power. So at this point, that's what I'm going to do. And, and um, you guys are going to see that little red passive underneath my health bar. That is a suppression debuff. That means that every time I hit the the uh, defender, my combat power rate is being reduced. And eventually it gets reduced negatively. So um, every time I hit, instead of gaining combat power, I'm actually losing power. And at this point I'll never get to another special because every hit I'm draining my own power. But again, it doesn't matter in this case because I'm doing enough damage um, without it. So you know, damage over time champs like Torch, uh, Archangel, champs that don't rely on specials are really good for um, strike counter. 
uh, suppression anyway. So anyway, that was it for the war. A relatively brief war. Uh, we had a really good war in BG3 yet again. I'm, I, we've been awesome this season. I'm super pumped about it. Uh, Resin BG3 with the silver. Bryn, uh, now back in BG3, is, he got the platinum. And then Mike with the gold. And that's one of the coolest cards that I think I've... I've made recently with the phasing. So anyway, that's it, guys. Leave a like and a comment. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.